And here, let me also say, uh, following on what Lynn was saying about how we research and dive into quilts, in a case like this, where you have lots of signatures on quilts, it's really good to go to the city directories and what, you, uh, which obviously you and Debbie did, but I'm just, mm -hmm. uh, you know, revisiting this, that to go to the map and the city directory and get the addresses of where everybody is and plot them on the map and see if mm -hmm. they belong to the same church, which obviously in these cases, they belong to the same church. But if you have an, a, a signature quilt, otherwise, you know, you, you start being able to find out what the connections might be. I she indeed entered the quilt in the contest, the local round probably was Miami, Florida, and she didn't win the first or second or third prize and have it go on to Chicago, but she did win an honorable mention, that green ribbon, and she put it in the middle of her quilt. She's re really proud of it. By 1860, the word chintzy came into, into use. It's certain, you know what it means. It means tacky. It means cheap. It means something you don't want in your home. And that was just about the time of the Civil War. Well, people continued to need large scale prints, but nobody was going to call it chintz after the Civil War. They began calling it cadeton. Now, she, unlike the, um, the suffragists, tended to um, make a political issue of housework. And the suffragists um, were uh, of the opinion that housework, including sewing, was inferior and should be abandoned. But um, Willard, um, in her brilliance, decided that it would be better to meet women where they were at the moment and involve them with the housework, especially sewing, in promoting the mission of the organization. So women started using their already honed talents to create, um, to create banners and uh, tea towels and uh, quilts that promoted the mission of um, temperance. 